Lula, the president of Brazil, compared Israel's brutal genocidal campaign in Gaza to the Nazis in Germany. Lula explained how Israel is committing their own Holocaust in Gaza, which is plain for everyone with two eyes to see. Despite Lula saying what literally everyone can see, Israel is not taking his comments well. In response, Israel declared that Lula is persona non grata because he called them out for their genocide. Zionists have been melting down and demanding that Lula make an apology for comparing them to Nazis in Germany. So Lula in Brazil proceeded to double down and tell Israel to fuck off, severing diplomatic ties with Israel. Now we have South American leaders like Evo Morales and Nicolas Maduro that are rallying to Lula's side. Where they essentially say, yeah, Lula's right. You guys are Nazi scum. I don't know, Israel. Maybe if you don't want to be compared to Nazis, you don't kill children and civilians at the rate that was killed in Auschwitz. Lula is far from perfect, but this is exactly why it was a great thing that he defeated that Zionist puppet, Bolsonaro. Lula has been a menace to the Biden administration from day one. Lula criticized the Biden administration, Zelensky, and NATO for blocking peace in Ukraine. He also called out the Biden persecution of Julian Assange, called for lifting the Cuban embargo, and now standing against the United States and Israel against their genocide. The true modern axis of evil is the United States, UK, and Israel, and they are becoming more isolated every single day. Uh, what's popping? What's popping, my people? Welcome to another edition of Nick and Knight. We got another bag prepared for you guys today. I got my great friend, um, my friend Robert Durden, who will be joining us here very soon. But as I said in the video, this is exactly why it was good that we didn't have that Zionist puppet Bolsonaro win in Brazil. And Lula essentially told the truth and united Latin America against Israel. People have been brainwashed into hating the wrong people. Like someone else who people have been brainwashed to hate is Nicolas Maduro, who Bernie Sanders called a tyrant. Because, you know, Bernie is so tough on authoritarianism that he voted for Jim Crow Joe. That's how tough Bernie Sanders is. But Bernie Sanders is going to write a eulogy about uh, Alexei Navalny the white supremacist scum. But you think Nicolas Maduro is a tyrant because Nicolas Maduro went after people who tried to kill him, the president. But Bernie Sanders supports and Dr. Cornel West supports locking up a bunch of drunk rednecks who showed up at the Capitol with no guns. So it's okay to lock up the deeply unserious January 6th protesters, but if you go after the opposition party that sided with a hostile foreign agency like the CIA, all of a sudden you're good. If, if you're wrong, if you go after those people, you got you got to notice how they always side with that Dr. Cornell West side with Alexei Navalny, who was propped up by the uh, by the CIA, and he calls him a freedom fighter. The same way that Bernie Sanders was, and AOC supported. Uh, the opposition against Maduro, who was backed up by the CIA. And they called him an authoritarian thug because they didn't allow the CIA to violently overthrow their country. Because Nicolas Maduro resists U.S. sanctions. That's why we are supposed to hate him, apparently. Brain thing is a thug, though. Brain thing is a tyrant. Meanwhile, Nicolas Maduro is speaking out against the genocide. Bernie Sanders is not. Bernie Sanders can't even call it a genocide. What's up, Rob? I see you in the background. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready, brother. I'll bring you up here very soon. This is... Actually, I should show you the video first. I'm going to show the Lula video, and I'm going to bring you in, Robert, to get your thoughts on Lula as well. And this, and just a statement overall. This is uh, pres, uh, the Brazilian President Lula comparing the IDF to Nazis and saying that Israel is committing the Holocaust. You know... What we can see with our two eyes. O que está acontecendo na faixa de Gaza com o povo palestino não existe nenhum outro momento. He said, "What has happened to the Gaza Strip and the Palestinian people does not exist in any historical moment." And do not get twisted. He is 100 right. Histórico. Aliás, existiu quando Hitler resolveu matar os judeus. 
sabe o que está acontecendo na faixa de Gaza com o povo palestino? Não existe nenhum outro momento histórico. So that's, um... Aliás, existiu quando Hitler resolveu matar os judeus. So, of course, when Lula said this, Israel was not happy about it. <laughs> Lula was very honest about what's going on in Gaza. And, of course, Zionists are allergic to honesty, like a vampire's sunlight. You know what I mean? <laughs> Israel declares Brazil Lula persona non grata for comparing Gaza war to Holocaust. How dare him? Call out the fact that we killed thousands of children. <laughs> like, did Israel really believe that they can just kill thousands of children? Thousands of civilians at the rate that we have never seen before? Let me pull my video up because I'm struggling to find this damn image. I might have to email it back to myself. Yeah, I'm going to email myself this image. Let me go to, back to my hotspot video because I, I put up the numbers. For other morons, but like, oh, it's not a genocide. There's still people left. You're supposed to call out a genocide before it's done, you idiot. <laughs> the, it's a genocide because the rate of the killing is at the same level of every single genocide. I'm sorry I do it this way. Um, I'm trying to find that picture I pulled up. I can't find it. You guys see this? Why can't I find it right now? <laughs> I should have saved it. Um... But when you look at October and November, you had 178 children that was being killed per day in Gaza. That's way more than was in Auschwitz, which was a disaster and tragedy. But that was over a period of five years. So the people who say there's no genocide in Gaza are complicit for one, evil for two. Youthful idiots to the Zionist regime and traitors to our country. Like, I view every Zionist as traitors to our country. They support a military campaign that is more deadly than Auschwitz. We, 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 not even a half a year into the campaign. And people are like, oh, well, you know, there's still hundreds of thousands of Palestinians. They are on the brink of starvation. <laughs> They're on the brink of starvation. Many more we can't find. And they're going to continue this campaign until they're all dead. You have U.S. Co uh, Congress people openly saying that's the agenda. Oh, let me, uh, do I have this up? I don't know if I had the right one up. Let me, oh, I'll post share this one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have this up. This is what I was, this is what I was reading, by the way. <laughs> you guys see that? I can't find the image for some fucking reason, man. I got, I got emailed to myself. I got saved on my phone. We got to see 178 children killed per day in Gaza, 127 kids t killed per day in Auschwitz. So if you're a Lula and you're making that comparison, you're 100% on the money. But before I continue, I want to bring my guest in. Uh, my good friend, uh, Robert Durden, had joined us tonight. It's been too long, my friend. Welcome yeah. Back again. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, so I want to give you a response to what Lula said, in general, Israel's response to the, like, ICJ calling South Africa Hamas, now Lula persona non grata, the UN is Hamas. Essentially, anyone who shows sympathy for Palestinian people are Hamas. How can anyone take these people seriously, Robert? Well, that's the question. I don't think anybody does take them seriously. I think they're in their own tiny little 5% echo chamber, you know, these you know, hoity-toity Zionists and shit lib elites that basically like echo all this stuff back to each other. But I mean, no, I don't think anybody actually does take them seriously. And you, you made a, a perfectly valid point, you know, in Auschwitz, 127 kids die daily, five straight years. No one's, you know, downplaying how horrible that is, but statistically speaking, they've killed more kids daily than died in Auschwitz. They've also killed numerous, you know, I think over 110 journalists, uh, hundreds yeah. of UN workers. Um, Can you imagine if Hamas did that? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no, they would They would actually have um, a valid reason to do what they're doing if Hamas were doing to Israel what Israel is actually doing to the Palestinians right now. I, I've often said that if, if Hamas were doing to Israel 
what Israel is doing to Hamas, Israel would just nuke Gaza. I mean, yes. that's what, that they would if, if Ru- let's say like if Russia were doing to the Ukrainians what the Israelis are doing to the Gazans right now, we would nuke Russia. So, I mean, it's it is a fair comparison. And I think it's a fair comparison to compare them to Nazis as well, because Zionism is inherently a supremacy based ideology. And they did a bunch of bullshit trickery, trying their best to equate Judaism with Zionism. Because they're doing their best, the ADL, like Jonathan Greenblatt and all the, you know, Zionists behind the scenes are doing their best to equate those two things falsely because they want to use Jewish people as a human shield for their very Nazi-like actions in Gaza right now because they want everyone to believe that what they're doing is actually just Judaism. It's not supremacy at all. It's not <laughs> us trying to do ethnic cleansing when clearly Zionism and Judaism are not the same thing. And is there anything that you can think of that is more, you know, detrimental to actual Jews, like what something a Nazi would do, than equating those two things and putting all Jews on earth who are not, in fact, Zionists at risk? I can't. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's why the people who actually fight against anti-Semitism the most are the leftists and the anti-imperialists who call out Israel. Not only because we stand up for the Palestinian Semitic people, because we are actually saying the record straight that most Jews... Jewish people aren't bloodthirsty monsters like Zionists. Zionists are the most anti-Semitic people, including the fact that most Zionists in the United States are evangelical Christians. So think about it for a second. You have evangelical Christians who spend their time calling Orthodox Jews and other Jewish people, anti-war Jewish people, who are opposed to the state of Israel. Evangelical Christians will look those Jewish people in the face and say that they are fake Jews and that they're anti-Semitic. What's more anti-Semitic than that, Robert? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> did you, uh, did Jews you see? that they're fake Jews because they don't support a state. But go ahead, Robert. Right. Um, a, a wild interview just happened where Smooley Boteach went up against Norman Finkelstein. And the, I haven't seen the whole interview, but there is a clip that dropped. And it was it was interesting to see. Norm Finkelstein makes the point when he's talking about October 7th. Piers Morgan is moderating in this uh, interview or this debate. And Norm says, listen, isn't it a natural reaction if you're going to put a bunch of people inside of what is an open air prison or a concentration camp for their entire lives? And many of these people are young people. They've never been outside Gaza. They're not allowed to leave. They're stuck there. It's for all intents and purposes, a concentration camp. Isn't it a natural reaction for them to start like creating rebel groups and to try to escape? Exactly. And immediately Boteach goes fucking ape shit and just calls uh, Norm Finkelstein a Holocaust denier. I'm not kidding you. So, I mean, it's, is this recent? Is this, yeah, I today. It, it just dropped today. Oh, shit. I haven't seen that. Oh, you got to see it. I don't think the whole um, I, I'm not sure the entire interview is up yet, but that clip has gone viral. And Shmuley is clearly out of his mind. And Norm is. Oh, so wait, cool Sh- Shmuley it went with again. Oh shit, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah oh, and Piers Morgan on Piers Morgan's show. And it was so oh, bad, geez. man. It was funny. Oh no, we gotta find that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we, gotta live, find it. we gotta do a live segment on that. What? <laughs> After dude, the he went off segment, the rails so hard, that, dude. What? Hold up. We might have we might have changed this whole damn show. <laughs> Hold up. But go, but, so anyway, uh, no, but my like, point please. is is that he calls Norm Finkelstein a Holocaust denier for simply asking the question, isn't it a natural reaction? Aren't you setting the parameters for resistance groups and rebel groups to be created when you create those conditions, when you're killing people, sniping journalists like Shireen Abu Akhle, shooting um, protesters during the March of Return, and they're having a contest, the Israeli snipers are having a contest to see who can shoot out the most kneecaps. You're doing this to children and you know, people that will inevitably become Hamas. And then you're surprised when there's like a jailbreak or a resistance group that forms inside said prison camp. You know, it's it, that's a natural reaction. And I like Norm's question. And it was crazy that Smooley went right off the off the rails on that one. Oh, shit, bro. Yeah, Smooley, right. he, after he was done with the interview, before the interview dropped, he came out and started talking shit and got ratioed immediately. And then, um, wow. <laughs> then the clip I dropped later. This. I was off Twitter a lot, uh, a lot of today. So this, so then Piers went after Ro- Smooley. What yes. is going on? So this is, so this is kind of going in the opposite order. And I don't want to. I want to go back to Lulu here very soon. But 
He said how he completely destroyed Norman Finkelstein. And then Piers Morgan said you were very personally insulting to Norman Finkelstein, but he wasn't to you despite, despite extreme provocation. I thought you overdid it. Oh my God, dude, this Wait. must this must have been this must have went horrible for right. the Zionists. And that's if my Piers point. Morgan is wow. Hold up. If right. you lose Piers Morgan, it means wow. you lost bad. Like, because you know he's looking for any reason to give Shmuley the benefit of the doubt. If it was like a tie, he's going to say, oh, you know, it's, it's pretty close, but Shmuley probably won. But it, you know how bad of a train wreck it has to be for Piers Morgan to actually call him out afterwards? That's my point. The Israelis don't even understand how awful they look because they dehumanize Palestinians so bad, which is normal in their circles. But in everybody else's, the 95% who aren't Zionists aren't buying this stuff. And if you lose Piers Morgan, that means that you got wiped out. That means you got – so that's my point. I don't think that they realize exactly how alone they are um, and how uh, horrible this stuff comes off to the rest of the world. All right, so I think we may cover that a bit because uh, I found the video. But I'm going to show you guys uh, the South American leaders that rallied in support for Lula before I do that. Uh as you have Netanyahu calling him an anti-Semite. Uh, you have a bunch of Zionists in the media in Europe that's melting down at Lula for daring calling Israel the Jewish state, comparing them to the Nazis. Well, if it looked like a Nazi, it smelled like a Nazi, it killed kids like a Nazi, <laughs> it's probably a Nazi. But the world has turned against the United States and Israel, so they are isolated in a big way. That's why you're seeing these public meltdowns like, Rabbi Smooley on Piers Morgan. That's why you're seeing these people, they are losing it. That's why you're seeing the right completely abandoning their free speech grift because they are, the Israel is losing the PR battle so much. So here's, um, you had Nicholas Maduro, and I had a video, I'm missing if I can find the video version of this, where he said Hitler was a construct, a monster created by Western elites. Today, the criminal military apparatus of Israel has the same encouragement, funding, and support. As President Lula said, what the Israeli government is doing is the same thing that Hitler did to the Jewish people. So Nicholas Maduro said, he said nothing wrong, fam. <laughs> you have uh, you have the Colombian pe uh, president. Gustavo Pedro. Pedro. Yeah, G Gustavo Pedro. Um, who said in Gaza there's a genocide and thousands of children and women are cow are cowardly murdered? Lula has only spoken the truth. Lula has only spoken the truth, and the truth must be defended, or bar barbarism will annihilate us. <laughs> so this is leaders on the world stage. This is this is another one, another Colombian president, um, who stood up for Lula. And what does it say about the United States and their falling influence that despite all the criticism I have of Lula, and there is legitimate criticism to have about his domestic policy, a lot of it which is not my business, but he has been exceptional in speaking out against the U.S. empire. Like we have the Julian Assange hearing today. He called out the United States for imprisoning Julian Assange. That's something that he's been vocal about. He called out Israel and their genocide right now. He called out the United States, Zelensky, and Ukraine for the Ukraine proxy war. You had Lula and AMLO that teamed up and called out the Cuban embargo. So, Robert, do you see what, what's happening here where you have the Mexican president and you had the Brazilian president? And usually these presidents, because they are so close and they have to have close relationship with the United States, usually these presidents are extremely conservative. When it comes to the United States, they usually are more than happy to repeat United States propaganda. Every single Mexican president has been like that. Brazilian presidents have always been extremely moderate, extremely capitalist. But now the United States has gone so far. You have AMLO and Lula that have been aggressively calling out the Biden administration. AMLO leading the charge to call out uh, the Cuban embargo, calling lifting the Cuban embargo. Lula also called out the Ukraine war. They, and now you're seeing this coalition of South American leaders that is not buying the United States bullshit anymore. Anything else you want to add to this, Robert, before we move on? I, I think you nailed it. I think the whole global South is quickly going to turn against the West. I think that the Ukraine war has really exposed the West, and particularly the U.S. military, as sort of a paper tiger. 
And I think that there has also been some inspiration gained from the uh, war in Palestine, the genocide in Palestine right now, particularly the Gazans themselves, the Hamas, but also in particular the Houthis in Yemen have really inspired a lot of Arabic countries to also kind of you know, buck recent trends. And I think they all realized that the U.S. and Israel, they talked a big talk and, you know, they put that propaganda out there that made you think that like the U.S. military and the Israeli spy agencies are really like the best in the world. But I think we've really seen that exposed lately. So I think that you're going to see the global South all start to kind of coalesce together and move sort of eastward as BRICS rises and more countries in the global South are included in BRICS and also in the Middle East. I think you're going to see the Middle East and the global South completely turn against the West. And it's going to be, I mean, for me, that's epic because that needs to absolutely happen. But I mean, I think they finally realized that they're, they don't have to be subordinate to the West the way that they used to. If they band together um, and move eastward, I think that they're probably going to be just fine, but they have to do it that way. They have to kind of decide together that we need to buck recent trends, get rid of the petrodollar for one. Um, I don't know if you saw, but Egypt dropped the petrodollar entirely today. Like they're not trading in the US dollars at all anymore. Egypt isn't. So we're going to see their recent BRICS member, by the way. I think you're going to see that with a lot more BRICS members. And the global south is going to very quickly, I think, turn against the West. So Israel demanded Brazil apologize. They said that they need Lula to retract and apologize or they won't be welcome back or they won't have friendly relationship with Israel and Brazil essentially responds fuck you I said what I said <laughs> that since you were literally like nigga I'm not I'm not retracting anything I said you guys murder children <laughs> so Brazil recalls ambassador to Israel and row over Lula's Gaza comment Israel said Brazilian president is not welcome in country after he compared Israel war on Gaza to the Holocaust. So, and he said, beat it, nerd. Yeah. I don't care. Gustavo because Petro did that after October 7th. <laughs> he, <laughs> he expelled the Israeli ambassador immediately. Because this is the terrorist country that Lula and the world are uniting to oppose. You know, only thing protecting Israel is the axis of evil, the United States and UK. You had a doctor in Gaza that had this story in the LA Times that's very devastating. Talking about the, the title of this say, uh, of this article is, I was a doctor in Gaza. It's not a war. <laughs> it's a slaughter. Now look at this. On one occasion, a handful of children, all about ages five to eight, were carried to the emergency room by their parents and all had a single sniper shot to the head. So you had Israel with their cowardly snipers because they get their ass handed to them on a battlefield with against a mosque. They see children in their sniper scopes and they are picking them off for fun with a single sniper shot to the head. There are reports of IDF shooting Palestinians in their kneecaps because they enjoy watching them suffer. That's the funnest part. The funnest thing to do is just pick a random Palestinian, shoot them in the kneecaps. What they're also doing is they're just fighting children and just pucking it right in the dome. And they want us to be afraid of being called anti-Semites for calling them out as the Nazi scum they are. And they want to add Robert real quick. Yeah, that the word anti-Semite really doesn't land anymore. They've yeah. uh, worn it out the same way they wore out Putin puppet, um, other right winger. They, they just when these people, these rich elitists, and in this case Zionists, they have no argument. They're just going to slap you with that. But they overuse it so much, and they never actually engage on the substance that it just becomes like a useless term. And I had a, a relatively. Um, relatively viral tweet yesterday that was calling this out i was like do you think that i care if you call me anti-semite when i yes, just okay. watched you kill you know thirteen thousand children over the last three months bring it on you got another thing coming so it doesn't right. land um i think people understand that um 
anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism are not, in fact, the same thing. In fact, I took a big a poll a couple of months back when this first started, when I first saw the ADL trying to get um, those two things equated. And in fact, they just they did pass something in Congress equating the two, you know, anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. And, uh, and the poll was overwhelmingly, no, those two are not the same thing. It was like 99% to one, and I had thousands of votes on it. So most people can see through it, and they're they're wearing out the term. And when you point out stuff like this, it makes it much easier to see that Zionism and these people that sadistically take glee out of sniping journalists and children and stuff like that. It's like, clearly you're the bad guys. And quite frankly, that seems like something the Nazis would do, doesn't it? And most average people, you don't have to be a political junkie of any kind to see that. So, I mean, this is just, you know, one in a long line of atrocious things that they've done. And you mentioned numerous of them, um, all of which could be easily something you would see coming out of world war two that the Nazis did to the Jews back in the day. So I had a segment planned. I don't know when I'm going to get to it. I don't know if I'm going to get to it, but I don't know if you guys seen Rachel Maddow's unhinged reaction to Tucker and Putin interview. Uh, and then she had another segment where she was talking about Navani and why it's so important to oppose Putin. And, and during this segment, and I decided to cut it today because it wasn't that important. But she goes on like a five minute rant pretending that Putin is the worst leader humanity have seen. Ma'am, Russia is opposing the genocide we are seeing in Gaza right now. We have the Biden administration that sees Israel sniping kids in the head. They're seeing people who have in their limbs amputated with their anesthesia. They they see the ICJ say that there are plausible a case for genocide against the Palestinian people. And despite that, they are still the lone veto on a ceasefire in Gaza. The Biden administration is one of the most unhinged, batshit crazy, violent administrations we have seen in modern human history. Like openly, unapologetically using their diplomacy in order to steal for a genocide. Meanwhile, Rachel Maddow and John Stewart are doing segments about how evil Putin is. Do you guys see how crazy the society is? We had, we we are ruled by baby killers. But they want you to hate Putin. You you want to know who who supported this resolution? Russia did. And Russia was consistently calling them out. Here, here is Russia. Not in the mood to give up. Today we have witnessed another black page in the history of the Security Council. And you see a lot of, and these are a collection of statements from countries that we are told that we are supposed to hate. Here's China, the, the quote-unquote authoritarian country that we should be prepared to go to war with because they're so evil, apparently. <laughs> China says, Vito sends the wrong message. And they called out the United States' use of veto power to, content, uh, to, uh, to shield Israel's crimes. You have Lula who is tired of, this, of the United States shit. <laughs> the United, he, he said the right to veto must end and the members of the UN Security Council must be pacifist players, not activists who form, form it war. So now the problem has gone so bad to the point where now the discussions about the United States veto power because they are weaponizing it in bad faith. How can you have, have people who claim they are advocating for peace when they are supplying and they are benefiting from bombs they are sending to other countries? 